Welcome to Horga and happy midsummer. You're listening to Scotty and Andrew, and this is Fun with Horror. Hello, I'm Scotty. Hey, everybody, I'm Andrew. And welcome to Fun with Horror. This is episode number 116, and this is the Horror Movie Review Podcast in which two long-distance best friends stay in touch by giving each other movies to watch and then discussing them. And, of course, last episode was me, and I picked 2019's Midsommar. But, of course, stay tuned to the end of the episode where we get to hear Scotty's pick for our next movie. Without further ado, hey, buddy. Oh, hey, buddy. Hey, how's it going? Buddy, I missed you. (laughs) I missed you, too. (laughs) I did an episode by myself. You did. It was great, too. You listened to it. I did. I did listen to it. What did you think of Demons? So I didn't watch it, but I listened (laughs) to you tell me all about it. (laughs) And was it a good movie? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I will say after after, uh, listening to it, I was like, I don't want to watch this movie. It sounds ridiculous, but it sounds fun. I am so curious if you watch the movie now. Having uh-huh. only listened to me talk about it and describe it, uh-huh. I'm very curious as to how the movie will be to you versus <laughs> what you imagined while you listened to my descriptions. I think I'll like it, though. It almost to me feels like, you know, I'd much rather prefer to read a book before I see the movie version of the book. This almost felt like the audiobook version of it. So when I see it, I'll be like, oh, that's exactly what I thought. Or, oh, not, a, not what I thought at all. <laughs> so I think I'll, I'll actually enjoy it because of that. Well, thank you, buddy. Thank you for being the only person to give me feedback, by the way. <laughs> no, I must have sucked because nobody, nobody, people gave me feedback on the intro. I think people are just intimidated. They're like, wow, when Scotty's by himself, he's so good that I, it's like talking to greatness, you know, it's just intimidating. So I think that's it. That's all. Oh, thank you, buddy. You're welcome. <laughs> or maybe they just was... don't they don't want to intrude on Scotty's alone time. That's true. I see what you did there. I do have to say though, I, I did almost like a spit take listening to it when you were talking about the scene with the, the girl's razor blade. chest. Yes, and the yes. razor blade and inserted my <laughs> that was my favorite part i i almost lost it i was laughing very very hard at that that cracked me up man that was perfect timing so yeah well done great editing great episode proud of you. yes yes <laughs> well it was fun but like i said i missed you and i missed you too i'd like to take a moment to give you a a virtual hug right now so Aww. here you go i'm hugging you buddy uh, i'm hugging you uh Oh, you smell good. (laughs) And you know what? Andrew and I would like to give everybody out there who's listening and who wants a hug, a great big hug right now. So right now, unless you don't want it because we are a consent only podcast. Yes, we are. We're giving you a hug. So imagine Andrew and I giving you a nice hug. And again, Scotty smells really nice. So just just know that. (laughs) Ah, <sighs> it's a good hug. I got a question for you. Okay. <laughs> Do you think we're going to annoy people by constantly saying Midsommar instead of Midsummer? Do you think yeah. they'll be like, they'll be like, oh, these, these freaking nerds. Like they yeah. always have to pronounce it correctly. And I don't even know. I had heard it said that way. And I might even be wrong when I say Midsommar. You're saying it with the Swedish accent. Okay. Yeah. So I could see people being like, okay. Okay, guys. Oh, God. <laughs> you're not from Sweden. Like, yeah. stop. Yeah. But I don't you're, care. <laughs> you're the people that come to party. Yeah. <laughs> you guys don't screw around. <laughs> so without further ado, mid-summer. Summer. My summer. My summer. Christian says you've got this special week planned. Yeah. It's sort of a crazy nine-day festival my family's doing. Lots of pageantry. Uh-huh. And- 
special ceremonies and dressing up. <laughs> Sounds fun. It'll probably seem very silly, but it's like theater. Midsommar is a 2019 horror movie directed and written by Ari Aster. It stars Florence Pugh, Jack Rayner, Wilhelm Blomgren, William Jackson Harper, Will Poulter, Alora Chorchia, and Archie Medeque. If I said that right, please tell me if I did. That's all I got, buddy. I want oh, to okay. talk to you about this movie. <laughs> but before you talk to me about this movie, mm-hmm. we are going to fully spoil Midsummer. Yes. And I just want to say real quick before we spoil it, talking about spoilers, I was just reminded again today on mm-hmm. social media, on threads, just everybody be kind to each other out there. As mm-hmm. far as spoilers are concerned, there's no statute of limitations. If you haven't seen something, it can be spoiled for you. If somebody doesn't want something spoiled for them, please don't come back at them with, it's been out for 20 years. It just doesn't matter. That said, we are going to spoil all of Midsummer if you've not seen it. So this is your fair warning. Yes. But, Andrew, yeah, <laughs> it's time for the three-minute <laughs> recap. Oh, boy. All right. Let's now, see just so you know, and I'm going to mm-hmm. be, this is totally fair. Right yes. now, mm-hmm. the the virtual 20-sided die yes. is on the number 18. Okay. So, oh, what what number, what are you picking? No, I'll do, I'm you? always going to do odd until it works. You're going to do odd. Do okay. Odd. If it's odd, you're doing it. If it's even, I'm doing it. Yes. I'm going to hit roll. <laughs> it's 17. <laughs> All right. I'm well, doing a short one. I'm so tired of these. I'm just going to do a short one today. It's okay because just to fulfill your wishes, Florence Pugh called me. Yeah. And she said she loves it when you do the three minute recap. She says you're the best. She's so sweet. Florence and you know so what? Sweet. I just, I did like a full like 45 minute recap last week. So <laughs> <laughs> it's your turn. That's true. It is. Yeah. You made up for the other <clears throat> three. Uh, okay four now four now (laughs) good luck with this one by the way go for it oh it's gonna be quick i'm not i'm not going into detail we're gonna talk about the movie i got you for three minutes three minutes of play time all right danny is our main character and her uh sister's bipolar and at the beginning kills her sister kills her parents as well as herself um she is dating Danny's dating Christian, who have, they kind of have a strained relationship. Christian and his buddies are deciding uh, that they're going to go to Sweden to go to this Midsommar, this uh, festival, uh, with one of the one of the guys in their group that says it's his family that's doing this. Um, Danny is invited, and she wants to get out. Obviously, just she's had a lot happen, so she wants to leave too. So they all go. Things seem great at first. Everyone there is really cool, and it's a really fun festival. Uh, they do some like shrooms, I think, and have kind of a. She has kind of a weird trip. If, yeah, have a, has a weird trip. But uh, eventually, we see things kind of go downhill. For instance, the biggest thing is uh, during this festival, these two older people decide to jump off a cliff to kill themselves uh, in front of everybody, and that's. A normal thing for this festival, which, of course, makes our characters very freaked out Uh, throughout. Each of them start dying, except, of course, Danny and Christian during this time, of course, uh, during this time, excuse me, they're being drugged at different times with different teas or whatever else it is. Christian is essentially lured into impregnating one of the other girls that is there. Danny finds out and is not very happy. And uh, during this time as well, she's kind of made almost like a name for herself. She won the big festival of dancing and has become like the queen, which happens every whatever, 60 years or something that this this festival happens. 90, I can't remember. I think it's 90. But uh, anyway, she becomes this queen and uh, people are really liking her. Anyway, at the end, we find out that this whole thing is actually essentially a cult that needs, uh, I believe, six outsiders and six people of the group somewhere around there i don't remember the numbers to sacrifice to their to their deity god whatever it may be and at the end danny gets to choose who's going to be the last person selected whether it be christian her boyfriend or someone from the the cult itself uh we don't see her answer but we do see christian 
<laughs> put into a bear costume into this room with the other dead bodies. Not a bear costume. It's actually a dead bear. Uh, but uh, put in this room with uh, all the other friends that have died, as well as the people from the cult. They light it on fire, and it ends with Danny smiling. There you go, man. <laughs> Very good. You know what? Uh, what? You came in in just under three minutes. <laughs> It's amazing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We're good, man. Oh, uh, there's God. so much I'm going to tell you about this movie. There's a couple things Please. that uh, you did not get correct in that recap, which is okay. Yeah, works for me, man. I studied this movie very closely, so I understand. Yeah, please. But before we get into it, everybody knows I love this movie. Yeah. I, I wanted you to pick it at some point. Mm -hmm. But what did you think of Midsummer? Ari Aster has now become one of my favorite directors. I think this movie was excellent. I think it was... I had high... Well, I don't want to say that, but I, I guess I did. I had high expectations just because of how much I loved Hereditary. And I was really hoping that this one would be as good or I would have those same feelings, I guess. I, I did. He knocked it out of the park again. So I'm... Anything he's, he puts out now, I'm very excited. I know there's one that we've talked about, but um, what Bo is Afraid, I think it's called... So now I'm very excited to see that one, too, because seriously, this is two that he's knocked out of the park with me. So I'm very happy with this movie. All right. Well, uh, before we get into it, the first thing I want to tell you, because I yes. think I'm going to blow your mind a little bit. I'm glad you liked it, by the way. <laughs> yeah, good. That. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of course, I'm extremely ecstatic that you loved it. Yeah. I think you're going to love it even more after this podcast. <laughs> okay. Because good. I watched it. Actually, here's what I did. I watched the theatrical cut right yep because i have both after i watched the theatrical cut to take notes i watched the director's cut dang dude i was gonna look up just the differences but then i wanted to watch the director's cut with the theatrical fresh in my mind so i right. could see the differences myself that's awesome dude but the first thing i'm gonna tell you is the numbers thing is very yeah. important. It's very important. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> the festival that they are at mm -hmm. happens every 90 years, like you said. Okay, right on. It takes place over mm -hmm. nine days. It's a nine-day feast. Okay, right. Yep, yep. Right? How many months are in a pregnancy cycle? Nine months. How many nine. letters does the word Midsummer have in it? I'm going to go with nine. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Also, this is going to blow your mind. Not this one. Not this one. Okay. So nine people at the end are sacrificed mm -hmm. at the end of the festival. Nine people. Mm -hmm. Also, it's probably in the movie elsewhere, but at the very beginning, mm -hmm. when the camera is on the answering machine, as Danny is calling her parents worried about her sister. R right. If you yeah. watch the answering machine, it counts up to the number nine before... <laughs> before it stops that's awesome that's awesome it's just speculation on what nine really means but mm -hmm. in norse mythology yep. odin hung upside down from the world tree yggdrasil mm -hmm. with his spear gungnir embedded in him and he hung there for nine days and nights in order to be granted the knowledge of the universe and the world okay and right to be on. able to impart it on everybody else. Sweet. Okay. So nine is a huge number in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah, I did not catch that. Right on. Okay. I like that. So let's start at the very beginning. The tapestry. Mm -hmm. The movie yeah. opens with a tapestry. Yeah. Did you go back and look at it after you watched no, the movie? No, I, I, I meant to, and I totally forgot to do it. But yes, I do remember seeing it and being like, mm, this this is a weird tapestry. This will play a part or or mean something or, you know. Well, it spoils the whole movie. Oh, right on. Okay. It shows every part. So it shows at the very front of the tapestry, it shows a dark image of her family dying. It's like Danny with her family kind of hovering around her with a cord between them. Mm hmm. Okay. The next panel is basically Christian comforting Danny while Pele observes from a tree above mm -hmm. and he's writing. Pele is writing in a in a little journal, which we find out is him drawing pictures. He likes to draw. Right. Right. And then it shows 
this was cool. It shows the four people. Uh, it would be Danny, Christian, Mark, and Josh being led by Pele. Mm. Pele is playing a flute like the Pied Piper. Oh, cool. That's awesome. So right there, if you're paying attention, it spoils that Pele has led them to this festival. Totally. And he has hypnotized them into going. Right, right, right. You also notice that in every picture, Josh is portrayed as a jester. He's got the full, <laughs> the full hat on, the jester's nice. cap. And Josh is always carrying a stack of books. Huh. It also shows the May Queen's throne in the sky. And it also shows two old people tumbling off of a cliff. <laughs> it also shows people alternately offering drink and skulls to Danny and the group. And that's interesting because thinking back to it, they're offering three skulls. Three of them basically die. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Christian, Mark, and Josh. And we're not counting right. Simon and Connie right now. Right, right, right. And then the last part of it shows Danny dancing around the maypole with girls <laughs> and three skeletons. <laughs> and it okay. also shows the final feast. And if you look closely at the final feast, you can see Christian sitting at the table. And Danny is, of course, at the head. Now, it doesn't nice. spoil the fire, the mm -hmm. sacrifice at the end. But there is a moment, if you noticed, where Danny is laying in her bed, depressed, crying after mm -hmm. she finds out about her sister. And the painting on the wall above yeah. her is of a little girl princess or queen kissing a giant bear. I do remember that one. Yes. Genius. That's awesome. This movie blew my mind watching it again. <laughs> Sometimes when I watch a movie another time to take notes, it's mm -hmm. it's like, okay, let's kind of fast forward through it. This time I was pausing it so many places going, what does that mean? Pause. <laughs> what does that mean? That's awesome. Like even down to the runes that are on their shirts and such. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which I'll get into. But man. <laughs> man All right. So. <laughs> What did you think about the opening with her sister and all? Tell me, Oof. tell me what you were thinking. That's dark. So, you know, it's funny. Well, yeah. So Kylie, she did not. Let me. No, no, no. Let me. Let me start by saying she did not watch this movie, but she had watched the beginning at her at someone's house, which I was like, Eesh. yeah, we it was anyway. <laughs> so she's like, I, I had, she's like, I couldn't watch it. I watched the beginning and I was, it's so gross and I didn't want to watch it. And I was like, good, this is probably not one for you then. So I was like, what's gross? And I told her, do not tell me anything about the beginning. <laughs> you told me it's gross. Oh, I she said this anything. before you saw it. Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. I was like, I don't know about this one, kiddo, because I don't know anything and I don't really want to like look it up and get spoiled. And she's like, I saw the beginning. I don't want to watch it. It's gross. I said, okay. So then. I get why she said it was gross, because, of course, we see, obviously, the sister, well, the parents first are dead, but then we see her horrific death, having the carbon monoxide, I guess it would be, from the back of the car, in a hose in her mouth with vomit everywhere, and her eyes just wide open. I mean, that's a dark shot. That was dark. And let me, let me pause real quick, because yeah. there's also something, if you watch it a second time, because mm -hmm. I hope someday you do, because it's yeah. such a rewarding rewatch this one i will i did with hereditary and it was great so for sure i yeah i wondered if it would be hard and that's something else i want to talk about but mm -hmm. at the very beginning the part i mentioned with the answering machine oh yes yeah the camera pans over and you see her parents in bed and they're yes. breathing but man rewatching it knowing what's coming you realize that her parents are dying at that moment like oh, they're being gosh. asphyxiated and ugh, it's such a disturbing opening Dark. Yeah, very dark. It was definitely, but I mean, sets it up. Like, you know, stuff is coming. Like, it yeah. definitely, it, yeah, sets it up. So, but dark, dude. Oofda. And then, and then you also have in between what's happening, you're becoming anxious because you're also witness to her and Christian's relationship. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is, and I hate to overuse this word, but it's toxic, you know? Yes. Yeah. No. Yep. The moment you're sitting watching him at this bar or whatever with his three dorm mates, they're all like, why are you still with her? Why haven't you broke up with her? And all this is going on and he's being he's being weak minded. Then he gets a phone call and 
you have like Mark sitting there going, are you serious? It's her again. Yeah. But then Christian gets up to answer the phone. And when he picks it up, he's like, Hey, and all you hear is her like just wailing. Yeah. And then the music picks up. Yeah. Yep. And the music yeah. in this movie, what did you think of it? All oh, it was all? great. That was my first two notes is cast and music. <laughs> Because <laughs> I wanted to discuss both. Yeah, the music's phenomenal in this yeah. movie. It's uh, it's Bobby Kerlick, and oh, okay. he's he was in a group or may still be in a group called the Hacks and Cloak. Oh, cool! Right on. And one little piece of personal trivia about mm -hmm. this music score is mm -hmm. about our friend JD. Oh yay! All right. When we play certain board games that are horror themed, uh -huh. I always play a huge playlist of horror movie soundtracks on shuffle. Awesome. And it's always a joy to listen to this playlist. You know, it's kind of like the one I made on Spotify. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. One day we were playing and the music came on that music that's playing as the camera's panning up and you're seeing yeah. her dead parents and sister. And it's the only piece of horror movie music that JD has asked me to skip past. He's like, wow. this is a little bit too intense. Can we skip past this? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> but yeah, the music is incredible. It's it's yeah. alternately disturbing yep. and then just absolutely beautiful. I honestly had that written down as well, that it's haunting and beautiful were the two that I said. But yes, totally same page. It was. Yeah. Yeah, it's it really is. I mean, it's a beautiful soundtrack. It it is beautiful. But if you had never seen this movie and hear it, you would still get those feelings of mm, I have a little dread. Something's off. I think. I don't know if you can think back to it, but mm -hmm. jumping ahead to the end of the movie, mm -hmm. the music that's playing during the immolation scene, during the sacrifice, the fire. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. That music is absolutely gorgeous. It's not ominous at all. That's true. You're right. Yep, that's very true. But it's just this beautiful music juxtaposed with this horrific moment. <laughs> yeah. And if you listen to the music before you saw the movie, you would not picture a scene like that at all. That's true. You're right. That's very true. I would definitely say, though, the earlier song songs, including the one that we just mentioned, for sure, you would feel that. But yeah, yeah. I agree with you. The end is definitely, definitely not what you would expect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is brilliant. But then in the opening... After her sister passes, you have these really uncomfortable scenes between Danny and Christian. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. For me personally, I have to be completely transparent and honest. Many, many years ago, I've been in the situation that Christian was in. Not to the degree of what happened to Danny, mm -hmm. but to the degree of I was staying with a girlfriend that... I should have broken it off with because I was not happy mm -hmm. and it's unfair for both of us to stay in that relationship. If I know that I want to be out of it, mm -hmm. but I'm nervous of what would happen if I do break up with her, you know, right, it's that right. weak minded man thing that I've been in. And then, mm -hmm. and then she needs me for something. She, she becomes a little codependent because of a certain situation, whatever that might be. And I stay with her for even longer because of that. Mm hmm. So watching that, it was so painful because I'm like, geez, I've been there. Mm -hmm. And I hate that I've been there. I hate that I was that person. I get you. Again, it was many years ago, so I'm you know, hopefully a little <laughs> bit better now. But just watching that whole thing with him, knowing he does not want to be in the relationship, her being so codependent on him, mm -hmm. knowing that something is wrong in their relationship, she knows too. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But whenever, whenever he gets mad at her or whatever, she's like, you know what? You're right. You're right. I don't want to fight. You know? I know. Yeah. yeah. And that's one of the differences between the theatrical and the director's cut, by the Ooh, way. Ooh, okay. What's laid on me? I'm going to say right now, in the long run, I think I prefer the, the theatrical cut of oh. this movie because it, it doesn't hold your hand as much. Mm-hmm. The director's cut just kind of drives home some of the things you pretty much know in the theatrical cut. And one of those is how what type of person Christian is to Danny. Ah, OK. In the director's cut, there's some scenes where he's like almost just mean, like 
he turns things against her. He gaslights her more. And instead of realizing what he's doing, she's like, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be like that. It's it's kind of like the scene where he kind of makes her uncomfortable with the help of Mark when they're about to take the mushroom tea. Oh, yes. Yeah. When he's like, yeah. I'll wait for you. And then he's like, guys, I'm going to wait with Danny. And of course, of course, Mark's going to be an, a dick about it. You of know? course he is. Yeah. And then she feels pressured. She doesn't want the situation to be uncomfortable. So she takes this mushroom tea when she knows she shouldn't. And then has a bad trip. <laughs> she has a bad trip. So yeah. this is when they've arrived in Sweden. They're on their way to this place. The director's cut also shows you how long of a drive it is from oh. where they land at the airport to where they're going to. There's just all these little cuts of Danny like sitting in the back seat and you hear Mark just talking utter crap in the front seat. Of course. <sighs> well, and what was it? Because I mean, they do say in the theatrical cut, like it's another what is it, like eight hours or something. Four, like four, four hours. hours. OK, yeah. four hours. I couldn't remember if it's four or eight. But yeah, OK. Yeah. <laughs> and to sit in a car in a four hour drive with Mark. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I'm going to jump in and piggyback on this because one thing like i said the two things that i had at the very beginning of my notes was music which we kind of discussed but cast was the other one i know we'll discuss more of this but man they cast this movie perfectly every single person in this movie was yeah was their character will poulter i've always liked will poulter i think he's a great actor i can't wait to see what he does next as well i think he's just fantastic and he just he played the part of mark so well in this that even watching it, because I he's played so many lovable characters that I genuinely do love, that when I watched it, I was like, oh, I hate that I hate him right now. Like, I hate that because I love Will Poulter, but I want to punch him in the face this whole time. Which, again, credit to the actor, you know? I think it's great. So, yeah, I just yeah. wanted to throw that in there. And William Jackson Harper. Yes. Oh, my gosh. As yeah. Josh. Mm -hmm. So, I saw this movie before I saw The Good Place. Oh, okay. Wow. I so I, th I think I, I think yeah. I think when I saw the Good Place finally, I recognized him from Midsummer, and I'm not sure. I could be wrong, but I think mm -hmm. that's the order I saw these things. Mm -hmm. And he was great too. He's like the one character. Well, actually, there's Pele as well. Who's mm -hmm. Pele? Just made me slightly uncomfortable. Yeah, <laughs> he's like the nicest guy. But at the same time, you just feel like he's like being the nice guy at the beginning of the movie who's who knows that Danny is being mistreated and he's going right. to try and maybe slide in there. Yep. Yep. And of course, by the end of the movie, you find out that he's got even more ulterior motives than that. <laughs> <laughs> but again, he was so great in this, too. I mean, he was like, mm -hmm. yes, he did have an agenda. Obviously, we know that. But even at like some of the times he was talking with Danny, I was like, Gosh, this guy's charming. Like, just just the actor himself. I mean, he knows how to play this part. And I was like, he's really charming. He's very, again, every single person in this movie. Florence, yeah. I will say Florence I've loved since the first second I saw her. But my gosh, this this intro to this movie of her essentially crumbling because her entire life is crushed was insanely intense and brilliantly acted. So... Man, I, I that's just one of the one of the many things I took from this movie. But man, just watching it every scene, I'm like, this is this is a master class in acting. If you if you want to yeah. take a class in acting, watch this movie because it's it is phenomenal. Everyone is phenomenal. I think this is the first movie I saw her in. Mm, nice. Unless she was in some small part that I don't remember. But this mm -hmm. was the first movie I noticed her in. Mm -hmm. Watching this movie again, I think I've definitely come to the conclusion that of everything she's been in, and she's been great, mm -hmm. I think this is her best performance still. It'd be hard to argue that. Yeah. I mean, she's phenomenal in this. She is. Yeah. Again, like I talked about the same thing in Hereditary. I'm going to go off on a tangent really quick. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to award shows, I mean, I don't even think she was nominated for this, but she should have been. She should have been. This whole movie should have been nominated. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just like Hereditary, I mentioned the same thing. I mean, this is mm -hmm. a it's a phenomenal movie. And the fact that it doesn't get any of like the the big award show don't even look at it. It's like, come on. Like it's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. So there's my tangent for a sec, but And on. then Jack Rayner, of course. As yes. Christian. 
God, I hated him so much. Me too. <laughs> he was such a manipulative, lying, mm -hmm. gaslighting piece of dog crap. Yep. Yep. But he played it so well. And the part that makes me so uncomfortable every time I watch this movie, but the part where I'm just so impressed by him is mm -hmm. after Danny has been crowned the May Queen. Yes. Yeah. And he is sitting at the table and he's looking down the table at her. Yeah. Yes. Just the look on his face because he is high off his gourd as well. He's tripping yeah. balls. Yes, yeah, he is. There's that moment and the just the way he's looking, watching her be taken away mm -hmm. and also just wa looking past her as that's happening. Yep. And then I got to say, man, like the entire scene where the big sex scene. Yeah. Which Wait, which one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think there was one in this movie, right? Yeah, I think so. I don't I don't remember it, though. Wasn't 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 memorable. <laughs> he he did such a fantastic job in that scene. Yeah. Yeah. Just the looks on his face were unbelievably realistic. Yeah. Yes. My it's God. Funny. I, no, I agree. I agree. Yeah, phenomenal. Phenomenal. But the real star of this movie... Oh, boy. ...is, number one, the cinematographer. Yes. Yep. And his name is, and I'm hopefully I pronounce this correctly, Pavel mm -hmm. Pogorzelski. Nice, okay, right on. He yeah. also shot Hereditary, and I believe yep. he also shot Bo is Afraid. Nice. I said the same thing about Hereditary as I would with this one. Pretty much any shot in this movie could be a poster for the movie. But even more so this movie. I Agreed. Think. Yep, I agree. I agree. They built this entire set, this entire village mm. in this field, and it's just unbelievable. When, when they first walk through that sun gate, and yep, you see yes. it for the first time, and you see the, the strange architecture of the church, mm -hmm. and then you go inside the big huge barn-like structure that they're all sleeping in and you see the paintings all over the walls and everything yeah. oh my god i mean granted that's also production design and right 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 set building what have you but the way that pavel films everything everything just looks so expansive yes yeah that's a good way to put that yep yeah and bright the way it's color corrected yes. is also like when they're at this village and when they're at this place mm -hmm. it's still colorful but at the same time everything feels so bright right like the sun is just on them but it doesn't feel hot agreed that's a really good point yes yeah dude really ah, good point totally true wow now the next thing i want to talk to you about oh boy. are some hidden things in this movie Oh, yes. I want to I want to talk about this right away. No, I love hidden things in movies. So, yes. Please. So she does the mushrooms with them mm -hmm. when they get there and they're sitting under the tree. And Will Poulter is hilarious. He was perfect in that scene. I I agree. He played high having a bad trip so well. It was like, this is this is perfect. I agree. Full disclosure. Uh huh. Scotty. Uh -huh. Your 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 co-host, your beautiful best friend. That's right. Back in the late nineties, Scotty was friends with LSD. Let's just say. <laughs> I haven't done it in a very long time because uh -huh. back then I was in a specific mind frame where I could handle anything. I sure. could handle yeah. any trip. And I never had a bad trip. <laughs> I did mushrooms maybe twice, but only one of them was memorable. Mm, but I okay. preferred LSD. All right on. And I'll tell you, as somebody who I know has never done LSD, right? <laughs> I have never seen the visuals in a movie portray what it feels like to be on LSD or acid or hallucinogens uh -huh. as accurately as this movie did. Wow, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. When they are tripping and the everything is like breathing and mm -hmm. kind of moving in waves, that is exactly what it looks like. Wow, that's wild. There is a slight prismatic texture to some things mm -hmm. that maybe wasn't in every scene, but like when she's laying at the bottom of the tree and she looks up at the tree and mm -hmm. you see like almost like the bark of the tree running in riverlets. Yeah. Yep. 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 
That's what it looks like, man. It's trippy, man. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. That's awesome. <laughs> I kind of so, love that fact. <laughs> and I love the fact that they bring that in every time somebody is tripping. One of our main characters is tripping. So yep. when it's from her point of view and she's tripping mm-hmm. at that point and then near the end of the movie, everything is breathing. And when yep. I think uh same thing is when it's Christian yep. and he's it's his point of view. Yep. But it's mostly her point of view, and it's not so much all the time with him, because when he goes into the sacred place, the church, <laughs> we'll call it, yeah. I don't remember anything kind of moving in that scene, except for the people moving. You yeah, know? Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I don't remember, like, the walls breathing or anything like that. Yeah, I don't remember. Huh. But back to hidden things. First of all, yeah. Danny, when she's first tripping, she goes into the outhouse. Yeah. Oh Did you catch? You caught that, right? Oh that yeah. One's, I that one's easy to that. catch. Yep. Yep. So the other one is a hidden image in the trees. Okay. Now, okay. by the look on your face, mm-hmm. you did not see it. No. It's after Danny becomes May Queen, and they pick her up on the platform, and they're yeah. carrying her across the field with the procession of all the people yes. behind her. I'm going to text you a picture right now. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm scared. Don't be scared. Be a little scared. I'm a little scared. Okay, you should have it on your phone. Oh, I see a face over there. Yeah, but look at it closely. You see the face in the trees, right? Right, yeah. Yeah. Do you see that the left eye is darker and the right eye is more white? the right eye is light. Yeah. And do you see what looks like an elongated thing coming from the mouth? And extending towards Danny. Yes. Definitely. So that's her that's her sister. It's an image of her sister in the trees. Oh, that's horrifying. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, of course, because her one eye. Oh my god. Yeah, because her one eye was clouded over from yeah. the asphyxiation. Oh my gosh, that's freaky, dude. Yeah. I'm so glad I knew about this. The second time I saw the movie, the first time I had heard about hidden imagery in the trees. Mm -hmm. And I got to say, as much as I love the movie, the first time I saw it, Uh I was sitting there watching the trees, every single scene that had them in it. As far as I know, there's only this one moment where there's actually a hidden image in the trees like that. So horrifying, because, of course, that elongated can mean a couple of things like her connected to her sister, but of course, also the hose itself. Like that's yeah. so dark. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh man. I keep looking at it. It's just messed up. <laughs> it's very messed up. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Well. Okay. So now let's jump backwards because I kind of jumped ahead of myself. That's the hidden imagery. Mm-hmm. Again, this is actually, I guess, the cinematography, but it's also special effects. Okay. How masterful was the scene where she's sitting on the couch with Pele, and he he tells her he's so sorry for her the loss of her parents. Yeah, And she goes into the bathroom, but the camera is above her. Yes. And then as she goes into the bathroom, she's suddenly in the airplane bathroom. Yep. That was a perfect cut. It was perfect. And then she's sitting in the airplane, and she's looking out the window, and the volume is kind of rising. Did mm-hmm. you notice that there is like a shaking, like the like yes. turbulence, and then cut, and then they're they're in Sweden? Yes. Did you think anything of that? I remember it perfectly, but I wasn't, I guess I didn't even connect anything. Obviously the worst interpretation of that is that the plane crashes and everything else is <laughs> like a vision that of what <laughs> happens, you know, oh, no. but the better interpretation is that that symbolizes a violent segue between her U S life and mm-hmm. Sweden. I like that. A transition. A violent transition is a better word. Right. Mm, okay. So, That's good. Yeah. Kind of being reborn. <laughs> this In a way. Yeah. Yeah. Because this whole movie, what did it, did it feel like anything? Like it was about anything else to you besides just four, five, bunch of, bunch of people being tourists at this place. That's horrific. That turns into a nightmare. I feel like if I had watched it again, I would have taken more notes on like some of the hidden symbolism and meanings and stuff. But because I know, I know with him, of course there are, of course yeah, there are. Yeah. There's lots with his movies, or at least the the two I've watched. It seems like it, but I didn't really 
do a lot of research on this one, man. You know, a lot of it goes over my head too. I don't consider myself a smart movie watcher when it comes to <laughs> stuff like that. I catch it sometimes, but hmm. I looked up meanings and the one thing I did made sense to me uh -huh. because I was like, it's interesting how throughout this whole movie, she's going through such trauma. Right. Right. But then at the very end, she smiles. Right. And it's just a haunting moment where she's just in a daze and she's in a daze the entire time after she catches Christian in the Holy house doing what yes. he's doing. She smiles. And the prevalent interpretation of that is that this movie is basically about grief and the stages of it and moving through it and finally letting go of it. Mm. Casting everything behind you, burning it up. Right. I almost want to rewatch it and see some of the beats that she has. Cause you know, there's the stages of grief. I'm curious, you know, like anger. And of course she's angry at some point. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm now I'm kind of curious if there's any beats that follow those stages to get there. Hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure if it this. really, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I caught any stages like that because I don't right. remember her being too angry. Uh, but I, I just know it's about her shedding her past. Right. Moving forward with a new family. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's really that hidden as far right. as subtext goes. The subtext that's hidden is the meaning of the pagan rituals like the uh, – let me, let me get the word right here. Atestupa mm -hmm. or atestupan or whatever. So – yeah, let me let me ask you what you thought about that scene. <laughs> and that is the old people on the cliff. I because they mentioned I feel like before this, they said something. Oh, it was Pele mentions almost a pass. And they're like, what happens? At, he kind of gives the stages. Here's what we believe in. And and at 70 or whatever the age is, he, they go, what does that mean? Or something like that. And he goes and kind of makes a, a throat cut. Right. You know, um, yeah. motion. But and then they kind of laugh like, oh, OK, haha. -ha. The second we see kind of the older couple, I went, uh oh, they're probably about that age. Something's about to go down. And of course, I mean, it, you know, they kind of make it feel that way, too. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a it's definitely tense. The scene, something's off. Quick side note. Yeah. When, when he is talking about the cycle of life mm -hmm, and the different mm -hmm. stages of life. Right. Every age that he mentions is a multiple multiple of nine. That's awesome. So, of course it is. Yeah, it keeps going. <laughs> Amazing. But yeah, but I mean, okay, so you're expecting that. So I they, was. I, I didn't know what was coming until they start walking up the cliff and I go, Oh, that's not good. <laughs> like I, I knew I knew they're either they're jumping or pushing or something, but they are definitely getting down to the bottom very quickly. Uh in not a good way. So I knew <laughs> I knew that was coming. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and then but... I will say, when we see, because we see them both die, so we see her jump first, yeah. and her face is obliterated. I mean, truly obliterated. We watch it explode, essentially, on a rock. But when the, when the gentleman jumps right after and goes feet first, and you just hear the crunch, I, I immediately thought, he could have survived that. Because it's, so, you know, it's not... Just watch it because you watch him jump and it's from a, you know, a, a distance. So you see him jump and land all in one frame. And the second he hits, I go, I feel like he could have survived that. And of course we see him go. <gasps> and then we see the hammer come out. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. My gosh, this is insane. And I oh. love the reactions of everybody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love how Danny and her crew are just like in, in shock. But yeah. then Simon is just. He's irate. He's freaking yeah, he's out. He's like, he's like, he's like, this is effed. What yeah. are you people doing? And they're like the ladies trying to calm him down and saying, this is part of our life. We don't want the old, old people. They don't want to go on like getting old. And, you know, and he's like, mm -hmm. this is effed, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Something yeah. else you may not have noticed even before yeah. that is the baby. Did you notice the baby crying? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. in the room with all of them. Yeah, yes. But did you realize what was kind of going on with that baby? Oh, someone put, didn't someone put the stick? Scissors. But even before that or after that, they mentioned that the baby's parents are off on pilgrimage or its mom is off on pilgrimage. So that oh, is kind man. of heartbreaking during this whole movie. 
is that this baby that's crying in so many moments of the movie is crying because right. its mom is just not there. Yeah, dude. Oof. Yeah. And supposedly, Damn. from what I read, the scissors under the pillow, like why scissors, right? But yeah. iron, iron is supposed to ward off evil. Okay. Okay. But again, why scissors, you know, of all iron, you know, you're putting right. a sharp object with under a baby. Yeah. Yeah. It's not smart. Other interpretations, other theories are that, and I kind of like this, is that the scissors are put under there to make the baby even more uncomfortable because they want the baby to cry at night and make, give everybody sleep deprivation Ooh, to mess okay. with everybody. Interesting. I, that, not that, but it did cross my mind of something like that. Cause I was like, man, they're, cause even uh, Danny needs to take sleeping pills. Yeah. Um, you know, to sleep. And I know it's, I, I mean, obviously part of it is because of the baby screaming all night, but I wondered, I was like, there's gotta be something with that. Cause I mean, I mean, it seems like an Ari thing to do, I guess, throw something. Yeah. He's making a point of something, but I don't, I didn't quite know why he was doing it. <laughs> it was just discomfort. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about you, but the first time I watched this movie, I had no idea what to expect. Yeah, I knew, I just knew it wasn't going to be good. And <laughs> I was nervous the entire movie. I agree. No, I agree with you. I was definitely anxious. Man, Ari is very good at that. Because yeah. even in Hereditary, it was the same thing. You just feel something the entire time. Just nerves. Something is on edge in you. Uh, and I, so I agree with you 100%. From beginning to end, I felt something. Like a presence. I don't know, man. <laughs> Just the dread. It was yeah, dread. Yeah, yeah. Going back to the cycles of grief now. Mm -hmm. One thing I did catch upon rewatching this movie is the old people jumping off the cliff. What that means for Danny. You know, you're thinking of everybody else. You're watching Simon and his girlfriend freaking out. You're right. watching. You're watching freaking Christian realizing that he's going to copy and bite off of josh's idea yeah. okay so oh he's God. he's kind of just mesmerized by this he's he thinks it's horrible of course but in a superficial way because he's yes. a superficial person yep but danny is having trouble coming to terms with the death of her parents and right. her sister obviously right but she is confronted with death in a very blunt and visceral sense during this scene and i do like the idea that this is when she's made to confront the idea of death mm. and what it may mean oh that's a good point wow Look at that. now after this mm -hmm. we have danny wanting to leave we have pele sitting and holding her hand and kind of making her feel slightly more comfortable right wait really quick i want to bring up one thing before we oh, do this please do because right after, again, just to show a little bit about Mark's character, oh. he, at this point, he'd, when, they, when the older people jump off, before that, so he's like taking a nap or whatever, so he misses all this. I don't remember when they talked to him, but they talked to him at one point, and he goes, the one exciting thing that happens, and you guys don't wake me yeah. up for it, and I was like, that's totally you, man. That is your character in a nutshell. Freaking, like, freaking it just, Mark, dude. Freaking Mark. I just had to bring that up because that line, I just went, oh my gosh, you're just horrible. <laughs> and then, yeah, like what I thought you were going to mention, mm -hmm. the next day oh. after they burn the old couple yes. and they put their ashes around this dead tree that right. symbolizes it's where all of their dead lay, he right. just goes to the tree and pisses on it. Yeah. And, and then... The thing is, is like it, he doesn't just piss on it. Mm -hmm. He almost has no remorse. He thinks that they're overreacting. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. just like, I had to go to the bathroom. What did I do? Like, what's yep. wrong with him? Like, OK, I get it. But why? You know? Yeah. But he he's, gets his, he's such he a. Gets his. Yeah, he gets his. <laughs> that the later on. <laughs> so this is really interesting. So that night following the death of the two old people. Right. Danny and Christian are kind of arguing this is cut out of the theatrical. This is in the director's cut only. Okay. There's a procession of people, and they're saying, come with us to the celebration. And Danny <laughs> looks, and she kind of hilariously says, "What? what's happening now? Like, what are you going to put, put us through now? So it's a nighttime ritual, I okay. would say. They're all at this lake. 
Danny's there. I think Connie is there. Obviously, Christian is there. I, I don't remember who else is there. But they're reciting this thing. It's this pageantry, this this performances, this performative thing. During this performance, this little boy comes out with long red hair pulled mm-hmm. back in a ponytail. He's got this specific like outfit on. It's like kind of netted with these. It, they kind of look like metal plates or Polaroid pictures or something, but I they're not. Oh. I just couldn't tell what they were. Okay. He goes up to the lake. Basically, he says something to the effect of he's offering himself as a sacrifice oh, geez. to the lake. And they pick him up, two men, by the ankles and then the head. Another man comes along to put a boulder on top mm-hmm. of the kid. So the idea is it looks like they're going to put this kid in the lake and he's going to drown because the boulder takes him to the bottom. Danny right. steps forward and she says, stop, don't do it. And then suddenly other people come forward, people hmm. part of the community, and they say, no, don't stop. And one person says, stop. He's proven his courage. It's all part of the performance. They weren't really going to put this kid in the lake. Mm-hmm. But after what Danny saw that day, it looks like they were. And then that night is the night that Danny has the dream that all four of them leave her. And then she opens her mouth to say stop. And Mark is leering at her from the back seat. And all this black smoke comes out of her mouth because she's just haunted by the asphyxiation. Mm -hmm. The importance of that, normally Mm -hmm. it wouldn't really matter much, right? Right. To the whole overall movie. Right. But the one cool thing that I noticed, and I'm going to jump to the end. Okay. When they are going to put the assorted dead bodies in the yellow house. Yeah. You see them carting Connie in a wheelbarrow. Yes. Her hair is wet. And she's Mm. got on the exact same outfit that the little boy was wearing in the performance. It's not super important, but you realize that when they lied to her saying that Simon was gone. When they had actually flayed him alive or whatever, opened his back. We'll get to that. Oh, yeah. When they told her that and then they took her away, they actually took her to that lake and held her down at the bottom of this lake with a boulder. My gosh. And how haunting was it that Danny is in the kitchen with the women Mm -hmm. helping to make pies or whatever. And she hears a scream in the distance. But it's just so momentary. That she dismisses it. And then a moment later, Mara, yeah, Mark, he's out by another place and he Mm -hmm. hears the scream for a second too. And he looks up and he's like looking up, but then he's distracted by the girl that he thinks wants to. Oh, right. Yes. Yep. 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 yep, Take him away. And because all he cares about is himself. Right. Of course. Yeah. But that's Connie in the background screaming. That's horrifying. It's horrifying. So let's, let's talk about the deaths in this movie. Oh boy. Yeah. Because we, we don't we don't see a lot of them. We don't. That's very true. Yeah. I I we have that note. We don't see Simon and Connie die, but we hear Connie. Mm-hmm. We see Simon later. We'll get Ooh. to that. We'll yeah, get yeah, to yeah. it. Yeah. Oh yeah. We need to talk about that. Oof. The next one I believe is Josh. Josh is feels he's in competition with Christian now because Christian has Decided he's going to do his thesis on Midsommar as well. Wait, no, Mark before that. Because when Josh dies, it's by someone right. wearing Mark's skin. That's correct. You are absolutely correct. Mark mm-hmm. is taken away. The girl takes him from the dinner, and it's after he pees on the tree. Yes. And right. the guy the guy that was, like, torn apart by it is just sitting there staring at him at the dinner. Yeah. yeah. And, he's and like, then the girl. Staring at me. <laughs> but, dude, how funny was that? The girl <laughs> comes up, and she says, Come. And he's like, what, what? Yeah. Come. And she's like, I'll show you. And yeah. he's like, okay. And he just, it, it, no, <laughs> yep. show me what? And then he's like, she's going to show me. And yep. <laughs> yeah. leave. This goes. <laughs> he's such an idiot. I know. I know. All the blood was not in his brain at that point, but uh, yeah. So yes, you're right. He disappears. But then that right. night, Josh purposely leaves his shoes on. Yes, he does. Yep. He gets out of bed, and there is, oh, let's talk about this. The book. Oh, oh well, yeah. There's a and, sacred yeah. text, a whole bunch of them in this building. Yeah. And we find out from Josh talking to the elder that all of the pictures and writings in this book 
are made by this mentally disabled person, also mm. physically disabled. Right. Yeah. Yep. 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 And this person is created by purposely inbreeding yeah. time and time cool. again. They purposely do this so that they have this unclouded mind, right. this, this simple mind, write these pictures that they can then interpret as their <laughs> sacred texts. Dude. Whenever that person's gone, they have somebody they've inbred to have another one take their place. Yep. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Yeah. That whole that whole scene of him explaining it to Josh, because Josh is doing his thesis or whatever and asking those questions. And when he's talking about that, I just was like, this is horrifying. Like, this yeah. is so messed up. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's yeah. starting to go beyond just like local customs that's yeah exactly that's kind of the moment you go oh they're doing some weird stuff man <laughs> like they're yeah. doing some mm, something coupled with the right. old people jumping off <laughs> right, of a yeah. cliff to kill themselves <laughs> yeah. uh, so then yeah so josh sneaks out that mm -hmm. night because he was told he could not take pictures photos were forbidden yeah this is the first time that you really actually see like like his sin his fault, if you will, is mm -hmm. that he's so dedicated to his thesis and learning that right. he loses any respect he has for the customs of these people. Right. Yep. Now, of course, by the end of the movie, we kind of feel like he was going to die at some point anyway, but right. it's Still. almost as if they manipulated him mm -hmm. into doing something that would cross the line which is what he does he goes in there he's taking a picture yeah he sees somebody come in <laughs> who has no <laughs> pants on right yep you notice yep. that right oh yeah and then they come up and they're wearing mark's sk skin off of his face which is horrifying and then like as he sees it because he even goes it's like hey who, who's there and then we see like we said the, the pantsless person I mean, and then he goes, Mark, what do you do? And then gets hit in the head. Yeah, from behind. From behind. Someone smacks him in the head. And then we just kind of see a close-up of this Mark skin, this person wearing Mark skin looking, tilting its head sort of at Josh, as if we were like in Josh's point of view almost, like just looking up at it, which to me, that was horrifying. One, it's horrifying to see someone wearing someone else's skin. But also, like in my mind, I'm sitting there going, how did Mark die? You know, like, yeah. I just went, ugh, ugh. You want to know how he died, my friend? Oh, yeah. Do you know? Because the hint is given at the beginning of the of their vacation. When they are sitting in the field, uh -huh. and it's right when the redheaded girl comes out, Maya. When Maya comes yeah. out, she's preparing herself to go get herself a catch. <laughs> and, you know, when she kicks Christian in the side. Yes. Yep, yep. Pele tells them that the kids are playing a game called Skin the Fool. Oh, my gosh. So that's your hint right there, that when they do finally take Mark aside, they skin him alive. Oh. Or at least oh. they skin his face off. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and that's horrifying. I can't be sure because it kind of doesn't look like it, but when the person is standing above Josh, who's bleeding out and just twitching because he's been brained by a huge sledgehammer mm -hmm. they're moaning like leatherface yes they're going, <laughs> so it makes me think that they that person in the skin might be reuben that's what i thought that was exactly okay. what i thought yep okay yep okay so that's that's those two yes so everything escalates pretty quickly because then we're just left with danny and christian right yeah that's exactly right we have the whole maypole scene where Danny is the last one standing. Yeah. And she is crowned the May Queen, which I kept looking for hints that that was manipulated. Mm -hmm. But how would they have known that she would be the last one standing? I could see all the other girls falling. Right. Maybe doing stuff, but I couldn't see them doing anything to make sure that Danny stayed standing up. Well, the one, the only thing I would say is, right. When they kind of start, when she starts and they and she's having fun and stuff and they switch arms with each other. At one point, one of the girls behind her swings around and throws up and falls down. And Danny kind of gives a look like, what? And then gets pulled again and keeps going. It's so subtle. It's so quick. 
Yeah, I caught that, but okay. I don't know. Maybe that would be. I'm just saying, if there was a way that she could win, maybe they were all took a little extra dose of whatever. But see, I still who knows. I, I feel like Danny was like their wild card in this whole thing because Pele yeah. did not mean for Danny to come. That's he, true. He ingratiated yeah. himself. Think about this. Go all the way back. He inserted himself in this group of guys with the sole purpose to eventually get all of them to come to Sweden for midsummer. That's true. So that they would all be sacrifices. And his brother did the same with Simon and Connie. Right. But Danny was not supposed to come on this vacation. She came because Christian was weak. And true. And there is actually another deleted scene after the party where Danny finds out that Christian is going to Sweden where mm-hmm. they are arguing. You know, Christian is oh, he's flubbing. It's partly in the version you saw. Yeah, I was going to Christ- say it because they do have a talk yeah. after the party. It extends further with Christian actually turning it back around on her, throwing it in her face like it's her fault that she's acting like this. And then she's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Christian. And she sits down. And then uh, there's this, they're sitting there kind of quietly for a second. And Christian is like, you know, oh, it's so manipulative and it's so disgusting. But he's like, I was going to ask if you wanted to come. Oh. And she's like, and she says, what? But you you were just mad at me. He's like, yeah, because you, it ruined the surprise. Oh, I was gross. Go- I, I wanted it to be romantic. And it's just, yeah, uh, it's so gross. What a douche. So the point is, Danny was not meant to come. And I also think the whole thing with the May Queen, they wanted her to become the May Queen. Mm-hmm. But they were prepared for it not to happen, I think. I could see that. I could see that. But I will they say... also needed her to become May Queen because they they needed whoever. I, I'm sure that if somebody else had become May Queen, that person would have picked Christian right, as right. the sacrifice. Right. What were you going to say? Well, no, I was going to say, I, I mean, we do get kind of that moment, though, where Pele's talking with her right before that great transition into the plane where they're talking. He says, I'm sorry. And then he kind of looks at her and goes, I'm really happy you're going to go with us. Yeah. Like he has almost like a like a premonition or something because he's sitting there looking at her and he goes, I think this is really good. I'm really happy that you're coming. So I don't know, man. It's almost I don't know. I don't know what this movie. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> Well, I will say that the rune on Pele's tunic oh, yeah. during okay, the movie, yes. mm-hmm. supposedly, now I, I read some interpretations of the runes, and then I looked up the runes myself, and mm-hmm. they seem to represent something else. But one person mentioned that the rune on his tunic signifies prosperity, and okay. so he's the prosperous one. Mm-hmm. His brother is going to sacrifice himself. Yeah. Pele is going to supposedly be with Danny for the rest of his life and they're going to be together. Mm, it's a cute couple. And then we have the runes on Danny's tunic. Oh yeah. Okay. I looked this shit up. Yeah. Lay it on me, man. <laughs> so she's got the, I, I'm not sure of how it's pronounced either Rado or Rido Rido okay. rune. It's a backwards R okay. or it looks like an R speaking of which, let me go back backwards, backwards, backwards. To the point near the beginning where they're all sitting and the camera goes up above everybody and they're all sitting in the shape of the Rido rune. Oh, that's awesome. So the Rido rune in its essence Mm -hmm. normally means journey. Okay. So it's kind of cool that at the beginning of the movie, they're all sitting in this uh, in this formation, that means journey. They're about to begin this journey. And throughout the whole thing, you see the Rido rune a lot because this is Danny's journey. Right. Ooh, right on, man. But on her tunic, the Rido rune is reversed. I actually copy and pasted this entire thing but because <laughs> it, it kind of means wrong way. But what it really means is um, the meaning of the Rido rune inverted in most situations, will indicate some kind of problem related to travel. It can be just a missed trip or troubles on the road, for example, a breakdown in transport, injury, loss of money, or a journey that was associated with unpleasant events. Oh, <laughs> For example, you had to travel to another city because of the news of the death of a relative. 
Whoa, dude. That was not in any description of Midsummer. That was just in a web page that said all the meanings of these different Nordic runes. Wild, man. That's awesome. Ari, well done. Doing your research. And then the other rune is awakening. Okay. That's what the other rune on her tunic means is awakening. That makes sense. <laughs> Wild. That's so cool. <laughs> I love stuff like that. The other thing I'm going to point out here mm -hmm. is I don't know about you, man. Okay. Lots of things in this movie made me uncomfortable. Yeah. Oh, right. No, I'm right there with you. <laughs> but when Danny is crowned May Queen, mm -hmm. there's one flower on the top of her crown that has a black like hole in it and it just keeps opening and closing. Oh, yeah. Yes. That yep. made me more uncomfortable than almost anything in the movie, man. <laughs> I was like, stop. Stop. <laughs> Also, when she's walking through the people and all their faces are, like, oh. distorting. Oh, and then sees her mom? Yeah, when she sees her mom. Yeah. And also, I'm going to tell you a secret, a uh, hallucinogenic secret. When she's oh, in no. the outhouse at the beginning of the movie and she uh -huh. looks in the mirror and she runs out because her face is distorting. Yes. One of the first rules anybody will tell you the first time you do a hallucinogen is do not look at yourself in the mirror. <gasps> really? Yeah. Oh, that's horrifying. <laughs> it is because you see your face distorted like that. Yeah, it's so. That actually freaks me out a little, man. Uh, so, so oh. they take her away after the May Queen feast. <laughs> yeah. Christian man. has been told by the matron of the group, I guess, that he is the perfect fit for Maya. And right. Right. They set him up to be with her. Yes. Wait, really, really quick before we Yo, jump into this. There's yeah. one more thing I wanted to bring up at that dinner. Oh, yes. Right oh. before she is when he's because he's high as well. He's in. We've yeah. talked a little bit about that. But he turns the old guy next to me. He's like, what's happening? And the guy collapses in his face. And he's like, he has a freak out. I go, Why would you do that? <laughs> that was one of my favorite moments. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Thank you for mentioning it because I... I almost forgot about that. And <laughs> that part just cracks me up. And me again, <laughs> Jack Rayner's acting in that moment is so good. It was perfect. I was like, I got to bring that up because I, I did too. I was like, it's perfect. His Why reaction did you was do that. Perfect. Yeah. And he looks like he's about to cry. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, is uh, it may, it's even funnier to me in a way because <laughs> I know what it feels like to be in that place. And I know how I would feel if somebody did that to me while right. I was tripping my ass off. Oh yeah, man. Oh yeah. And just, just, I just want to reiterate, I have not, I have not tripped since the late nineties. Okay. So it's all good, man. Way past it. Good. <laughs> Those are the old days, the good old days. Yeah. So the sex scene, how uncomfortable were you? How uncomfortable? Oh, very, very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, it's a wild scene, man. I was. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah, I, I don't even know where to begin. It was just. We don't really have to go into it. No, it's it's fine. I just I'm like it's 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 one of those where it's, yeah, I don't even know. It's wild. I will say, I will say. <laughs> so, just to remind everybody who has <laughs> forgotten about this amazing scene, they give him, they have him. Smell something that's supposed to increase his potency. Don't they and blow then, it in his face? Uh, that was a different part. Oh, okay. Okay. I couldn't remember. This was, this was a little oh, like right. black with the smoke. Yep. You're right. Yep. 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 That's after. That's yeah. after. Yep. Yep. Now I remember. <laughs> but yeah. So basically, you have all these naked women standing behind this bed of leaves and stuff with the, with Maya, the red haired girl, who I don't know, man. Like, this is disturbing because I believe in this movie she's her character is supposed to be like sixteen. Ugh. Because I think they I think there's a line of dialogue that says she's after fifteen, like oh, she's yeah. she's allowed to mate. Yeah, you're right. I do remember something like that. Yep. Yeah. So they bring Christian in to have sex with her, which he does, and it's a very intense scene while Danny is off doing this other ritual to help their crops right. right the one part i will mention because it kind of makes me laugh is yeah. 
there's the woman that's standing directly behind and she reaches down and holds Maya's hand for a second. And then she comes down and kneels next to them and she puts Maya's hand on her cheek and then she starts to sing beautifully. And the look on Christian's yes. face when he looks up and he's like, cause he's trying to like do his thing. And like, then this what? happens. <laughs> but I will say there is a freaking detail in this movie that I'm not sure if you noticed no. that I didn't notice the first time. Okay. And I'm going to be very graphic here. So I apologize, everybody. This may be a little triggering, but it's a horror movie and horror movies are triggering, right? That's yes. Yes. So after, after he finishes Right. And yes. she's like in the fetal position, rocking back and forth, saying, I can feel the baby inside me. Ugh. Right. Yeah. He runs out of the barn of the church naked. And when yes. you when he runs out, if you look closely, which obviously I did, I don't know why <laughs> you can see what looks like the remnants of blood around his genitalia <gasps> because he had just obviously had right. sex with this virgin. Oh my gosh. And for Ari to add that detail is just like <laughs> dude. It's realistic, but it's disturbing as hell. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm definitely gonna make this episode explicit, by the way. No, that's yeah, go for <laughs> it, man. <laughs> you do you. But before that happens, we have the scene where Danny comes back early. Oh gosh, yeah. yeah. And you know that this was them manipulating her for because sure. she comes back and you hear the people moaning mm -hmm. and then she's like, what's going on in there? And the one girl's like, that is not for us. And then of course, Danny's like, I have to see. So she goes and she looks through the peephole, the keyhole. Mm -hmm. And then she comes out and she collapses amongst all the girls. And this part was incredible. My friend, Yeah, dude. when they take her into the barn, the sleeping area and she's crying and they're like fake crying with her. Mimicking. Yeah, mimicking her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But Florence's performance in that moment is unbelievable. Yeah. She's incredible. She's incredible in this movie. And that's, yeah, definitely a highlight. That scene is a highlight of that, for sure. I think Florence's performance in this movie reminds mm -hmm. me of the emotional performance of uh, Kevin Bacon's daughter. I can't remember her first name. In Smile. Oh, because Shoot. she had another emotional huge right. like like I can't imagine where you have to go as an actor right. to be in that headspace. Oh yeah, dude. Man. Yes. Dark. So <laughs> so then Christian he runs out naked and he runs into this little oh. building. So this is where we see the remnants of some of them. We see uh we see Josh's foot sticking out of the garden. <laughs> yes, yeah. And there's some, there's a rune on the bottom of his foot, and there is some argument online as to what that rune is. Oh. And I disagree with what people say. Some people are saying that it's a rune like that looks like an F, and I can't remember what that one's called. Mm -hmm. And the meaning behind that rune makes sense, but I paused that moment and I looked at that rune really hard, and I was like, I don't think it's that one. Hmm. And then somebody mentioned, uh, a rune that looks kind of like an M, but to me, it looks like the Dagaz rune, which signifies change or transformation. Well, that would make sense. <laughs> it does. And I'm surprised yeah. nobody else like even mentioned the Dagaz rune. Anything I looked up, like on Reddit or whatever. Weird. So then he runs in and he finds Simon oh. suspended above these what crops, I guess. So yeah, something. And his back is just flayed open and his lungs are pulled out. And it now Christian was very high hallucinating. Oh, good call. I didn't even think of that. Because from everything I've read, that is impossible for the lungs to still be inflating and deflating if they're okay. in, taken out of the back like that and suspended. But what an incredible sight. Ooh, well, at first, and I, I, I had no idea what I was looking at. Because we kind of just see it, it, it takes a second, you know, before it kind of, it's almost blurry or something. It just takes just a second. And I was like, is that his skin? Is that like, what the heck is that? And then once you finally get the full picture, I was like, oh my gosh, like that's yeah. messed up. 
really messed up and just a sight, a sight to behold. Like it's very, we can describe it, but it's almost one of those. You got to see it. Well, I kind of well, almost, I kind of did, but it's hard to describe. No, no, no. I mean, you did describe it, but I'm just saying yeah. like, it's, it's hard to like, <laughs> Oh, I see what you're imagine saying. Imagine it. Like, you know what I mean? Like you just yeah. got to see it. Like it's, ugh. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> so then finally we have the final climactic scene of this movie, which is freaking unbelievable. Yes. We find out that the yellow house is a sacrificial house. Yeah. Nine people are going to be placed in it. And first right. we have Christian, who Danny chooses between two people. They ask her to choose between Christian, who is completely paralyzed because of this powder that was blown in his face. There we go. Yeah. And he can't feel anything or do anything, but he's completely awake. Or at least I don't know if he can feel anything, but I don't know. If he can feel stuff, that's even more disturbing. But yeah, we find out that the bear that we saw in a cage at the beginning of the movie that we've probably completely forgotten about. Yeah, and even someone says, I forget, Mark or someone is like, are we just not going to talk about the bear? It's Simon. (laughs) Simon, Simon okay, yeah. (laughs) Then they just drop it. And you never see the bear again until this point when you find out that the, the key person, the center of the sacrifice, the bear is killed. His intestines and guts are taken out, and this surgeon guy is teaching the kids how to take out the bear's guts. Mm -hmm. It looked fake to me. It didn't disturb me. I agree. I was was okay. Yep, it did. It looked fake. Here's what disturbed me, my friend. Oh, no. Knowing that Christian was going to be put into the bear's skin, having seen this movie already. Okay. Christian is sitting in the corner in his little chair, just like kind of crumpled up in his paralyzation paralysis paralysis is the word i'm looking for yeah i got there (laughs) you got there right before the movie cuts away from the scene you see the surgeon or whatever he is you see him pick up like a hammer and chisel after they place christian next to the bear on the table it took me three views to notice this and to realize that they are going to break Christian's bones to make him fit inside the bear more oh, easily. No. Oh, that's so much worse. It's oh. so much worse. So we have nine sacrifices in this in this building. We have Christian. Yes. We have Simon and Connie. Right. And yes. we have Mark and Josh. And yeah, then, yeah. so that's five. Then we have the two old people. That's seven. And the right. old people look so crazy with like they look more pagan than anybody else. It's oh, crazy. yeah, for sure. For sure. And then you have two volunteers, two oh volunteers that will sit there and be burnt alive. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things, too, before that happens, when the when the people are setting up the inside and they say, drink this like it will help with the pain. And so like Paley's brother and then the other guy drink it. And you think, oh, that's good. They won't feel anything. But they do. <laughs> they really do. So Pretty dark. I was like, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> I got to say, after the first time I saw this movie and after a lot of time passed, mm-hmm. one of the moments that haunted me the most is that guy sitting yeah. there. And they just kind of look at each other peacefully as the mm-hmm. flames are building around this barn. Yeah. And then he as as he catches fire, he's just like, ah, ah, and he's yeah. like, oh, you can tell that he's just and then like everybody outside is like mimicking perform, again. Yeah, mimicking. Yep. They're doing the How same. You... Every scream. They're doing the same scream. Yeah, that was wild, man. That seems wild. Also, bravo to you for keep uh, keeping uh, bringing up that word mimicking. <laughs> <laughs> because I keep thinking of other words and then you're like mimicking and I'm like, oh yeah, that's the perfect word I'm looking for. So thank you, buddy. I love you. That's what I'm here for, man. I'm trying to mimic you. That oh stop it. This. <laughs> and then, you know, at the end we have Danny smiling. Right. And that is to signify that she's finally leaving loss and grief behind her. And she's got a pretty sweet life ahead of her. This is a cool group of people. Until she's 72. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> uh, uh, so bad. I'm like, let me, let me, I don't know, man. I'm okay getting old. I don't want to jump off this cliff oh, face yeah. first into this rock. No, no, I, I would rather, yeah, I'd rather grow old. Yeah, for sure. 
And I, actually, that brings up a point, too, because even Christian, I think it's Christian, remind me if I'm wrong, but when he's trying to, like, justify it later to Danny or whatever, and he's like, they probably think we're crazy because we put older people in a nursing home and let them yeah. get old and, and hurt. And it's like, stop, stop justifying this, dude. <laughs> I'll be honest, though. Yeah. I was like, you know what? He's got a point. Because <laughs> it's true. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. At that point in the movie, you're dealing with something that is horrific to us right but might be tradition for these people it might just right. be what they do right oh that's true yeah yeah, yeah. and i'm yeah. like you know if that's how they feel about aging and getting old like mm -hmm. who are we to judge that right like maybe they do think putting a person in a nursing home and just letting them just wither away in their age is barbaric right yeah that's fair but I mean, there's cannibals. I, I don't like there's cannibals that eat flesh, human flesh, and who are we to judge them, right? I mean, well, hold on now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time for three questions, my friend. Yeah, let's do this. Who would cross the bridge of death must answer me these questions, three. All right, this is your movie. I guess your movie. You picked it. Question right. number one: What did you think was the best kill or death in this movie? When again, we like we already kind of discussed, you, you don't see a lot, but I truly believe that the two older people jumping, and I'm counting them both as one, was just such a incredible scene that kind of takes you on the next step of this journey, this story, this everything. So I would definitely say those two. The shock va value, the story points, just everything kind of culminated into just a, a wild scene that I that will stick with me for a very, very long time. So I'm going to agree with you. Yeah, <laughs> because that's the other scene that stuck with me for a long time after I watched the movie the first time, because it's just so blunt. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And Ari Aster has this amazing talent for not letting you look away from something. Oh, that's a really good point. You know, in any other movie, wow. you might see the person fall, but it would be like maybe blurry or it would mm -hmm. be subtle. Like, oh, my God, they just jump. But no, he makes you watch this woman fall. And when you think all you're watching is her hitting this rock, then he goes close up. Yes. To her destroyed face, like kind of bouncing backwards off of it in a bloody mess. Oh, it's bad. Yeah. And then, of course, the old man is just horrifying. The fact oh. that he his his leg is mangled because he fell from such a from a tall height and then right. that they that they have to use this big sledgehammer that they're prepared to use oh yeah it's there the person's for that still reason. alive it's happened yep. before i guess yep oh, man here is the question of the day my friend because yeah. this is something that has been talked about so much with this movie mm. especially after people saw hereditary okay do you think Midsummer is scary? That is a tough question. Yes and no, man. Again, for me, just as a fan of movies, as a fan of, of Ari, as a fan of horror, as a fan of all this, I'm not scared. It's not something I, like that night I fell asleep. I was fine. I didn't have nightmares. I didn't think, oh man, this cult's coming for me. It wasn't anything like that. Yeah. However, it's scary in the fact that I believe it sticks with you. It's one of those ones where you start thinking all of a sudden I'll have like a memory of it. And I just go, ah, <laughs> you know, because I'm, <laughs> or something triggers it. I mean, it really has that effect. I feel like at least for me, or if I see something that might be similar, I'm like, oh, man, that scene or all oh, that thing or all oh, that. So, again, it's this one's tough. I would say yes and no. I mean, I know that people have talked about it as almost. Like not a horror, but I, I I disagree with that. I mean, this is a this is a, it's a horrific film. I mean, there's there's horror in this movie that, I mean, for lack of a better word, is horrifying. So I would definitely call it that. Um, we get into the conversation that mm -hmm. we've had before, mm -hmm. where people think that a movie has to be out and out scary, like right jump scares or monsters or what have you. Otherwise, it's not a horror movie. Right. Right. right? Mm -hmm. So I think this movie is definitely a horror movie. It makes you feel uncomfortable throughout the entire thing. There's some horrific scenes. Yeah. Obviously, the part where Josh goes into the holy house and gets his that's a scary moment. Yeah, it is very, very so, scary. I think it's a scary movie. Yeah, I, I agree. In its I own agree. way. I think it's more unsettling than scary. Yes. Yep. That's a very good word for it. Yes. 
<laughs> Number three, did you have fun with horror? <laughs> so this is, again with this question, it's not a fun movie. I don't sit there and go like that was what what a charming flick, but man, it's a good movie. It is a very good movie and one that I think is dang near perfect. So I loved it. I think it's a great movie. Did I have fun watching it? No, I'm unsettled the entire time. But man, I would recommend this movie to anyone and everyone. I think it's fantastic. You said Hereditary was a perfect movie too. I love this. Yeah, man. I, I, I'm telling you, Ari, Ari Aster has seriously become someone that I am excited to watch. I'm excited to see what he does next. Awesome. Um, I love, I, yeah, love what he does. That's exciting, man. I love yeah, it. Man. And you. funny thing is the first time I watched this movie, I wouldn't say I had fun. Right. Part of watching this movie again, and, you know, I wouldn't say the movie's fun, but right. <laughs> some of the aspects that I was paying attention to on these rewatches were fun. That's fair. Like mm -hmm. trying to decipher the different runes and the, the hidden images and the meanings and stuff. We didn't even get into the backwards tapestry that detailed how a girl oh makes a guy fall in love with her. Yeah. You know, oh we should probably gosh. mention that because that's a huge part of the movie where she puts something under his bed. Right. Well, in the in the tapestry, it's flowers under the pillow. But in the movie, it's like this little wooden stick with a love rune on it. Right. Yes. And then she cuts off her pubic hair, bakes it in a pie and gives it to him yeah. and then puts minstrel blood in his drink. And oh, my God. Yeah. The moment where they're sitting at dinner. And first of all, he bites into the pie and Ugh. pulls out a hair. <laughs> and I think it's kind of hilarious that everybody around him, his friends are like, is that a pube? Yeah. Yeah. Like Marcus immediately. Says, like, I, would, <laughs> I, would, I don't know if I would have done that. I would, like like Christian, I would have been like, I don't know. It's just a hair, guys. I mean, yeah. we're, this is a natural place. It's a hair. Come on. But right. then when you look at all the drinks on the table and his is the only one that's miscolored. It's so bad. So it's bad. so gross, dude. And he drinks it. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, this movie's a lot of fun. It is. It's a fun one. It's cute. We should go now to Seal's house. What's this? It's a special meeting only for the queens. And she will bless you. What's that? That's not for us. All right, buddy. We just did a pretty uplifting movie, Midsommar. Um, so I'm wondering what we're going to do next. Is it going to be uplifting? Is it going to be cute, fun? I don't know what you're picking, man. I actually have no idea what, what movie we're doing next. So I'm very curious, excited, and ready to go. How about a movie that neither of us have seen? I love that idea. How about a very recent movie? I love that idea. How about a movie about a portal to hell in a swimming pool? <laughs> yeah man our next yeah. movie is night swim yeah dude awesome i'm so I, excited i have heard conflicting opinions about this movie mm -hmm. i famously as i've mentioned in another podcast i went to a screening of this movie and left before it started because the guy behind me was covid coughing all over the place <laughs> sorry dude but you know what i happened to put on my night swim t-shirt today and i was like you know what i think it might be time nice yeah dude so in, i love in, it in hopefully two weeks we will be doing night swim and i mean as you maybe you remember this but that that was my most anticipated movie for uh this year so I'm i totally really forgot that that's yeah. oh i'm excited now yeah i've been waiting i've been I, I just didn't know when the time was right but this is the time man this it feels good it feels right now is the time <laughs> all right i'm glad you're excited about it i'm That's very good. excited I've, I've been wanting to watch this forever so i'm really excited just don't get your hopes up that it's a great movie i won't but i'm excited yeah okay <laughs> <laughs well this episode my friend has gone on long enough yeah probably everybody <laughs> thank you for listening Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you. This has been wonderful. You know what? I am going to add something here at the end because it's something I meant to say during the body of the episode. Okay. And it's okay if it's at the very end and nobody hears it because I want to tell you. Well, I'm, hey, I'm here. I was very curious. You know, I, last week I talked about depression and oh, yeah. what I've been going right. through. And you, you already knew this. Right. Yes. 
all of this depression happened before I watched Midsummer. Oh. <laughs> and I was very curious wow. how a movie like Midsummer was going to or how my state of mind was going to affect my view of Midsummer. Totally. Yeah. And wow. I got to say in a weird way, you know, we talk about horror movies being cathartic. Mm -hmm. Uh I don't think Midsummer like helped necessarily <laughs> yeah. but i didn't it didn't add to my depression or anything like it was nice to see something or some people going through something worse than i was going through <laughs> fair enough in man. a way i guess you know uh no i yeah yeah well i'm glad i yeah i'm glad it didn't add anything negatively to you yeah you don't you don't need that so people talk about horror movies as a way to get through the hard times yeah. And it's absolutely. strange. I haven't been watching a lot of horror movies during this time. Like my comfort movies are Marvel MCU films. That's what I've been watching the most of. But, you know, I do need to sit down and watch more horror movies. There's some about them, man. I mean, gosh, we made a freaking podcast about them. So there's definitely something about them that we did. Yeah. It's uh, friends, what is it called? friends with scary, I think, or something, uh, something like that. I need to make some more notes. Friends but, with Scary. I'll, I'm going to Google scary. that. Yeah, Google it. It's pretty cool. With uh, Stephen and Aaron, I think, or something. Stephen uh, and Aaron. Yeah. Well, everybody, thank you for <laughs> tuning in and listening to Friends with Scary with Stephen and Aaron. <laughs> I've been Stephen. And I've been Aaron. <laughs> and we love you so much. We do love you. Mwah. We're going we're gonna to give those of you that wanted another big hug at the end of the episode. We gave you one at the beginning. This is Stephen and Aaron signing off. Bye, everybody. Bye. What time is it? It's 9 p.m. What do you mean? What do you mean? That can't be right. The sky is blue. It's fine. It's Sweden. That's not fine. Why is it like that? It's okay, Mark. It's the midnight sun. That feels wrong. I don't like that. I promise you it's okay. I'm not okay. Oh, fuck. It's a new person. What? I don't want new people right now. No, new people are good, Mark.